Hello and welcome to the channel. In the previous video we looked at the grid in Bitwig 4.4 and then in Bitwig 5.0 and uh, we ran a few experiments on uh, some of the random devices in the grid which turned out that the sequences they produce, the sequences of random values, were not exactly random were they. Every time we would close the project in Bitwig and reopen it again we would hear the same sequence repeating over and over again. I think it's a bit of a problem for those of us who uh, like to generate, like to create generative random patches or just add randomness into projects because every time we open such a project in Bitwig and press play, the random devices happen to generate new values which are exactly the same as we showed before new values which are exactly the same as the values that they generated before when we previously opened the same project in Bitwig. And uh, as I mentioned previously, oops, as I mentioned previously, those uh, there are there is a workaround for this problem. The three problematic devices are dice, chance and probabilities and each of them we can replace with uh, something different. And uh, in today's video, I'd like to show uh, how to do this. So let's uh, start with uh, DICE. Uh, what DICE does is it receives a trigger on its input, and on its output it generates a random value, which is a fraction between 0 and 1. And then it does one more thing, which is actually very important and extremely helpful. It holds on to that value. So in that sense it behaves pretty much like a sample and hold device that it keeps the value it generated until the next uh, trigger comes. So thankfully uh, two other random devices in Bitwig uh, do, not, do not seem to exhibit the problem of repeating sequences and these devices are noise and the sample and hold LFO. Now if you need some more control over the randomness of your patches for instance, if you need to decide if, you, if the changes of the random values in, in the random sequence, if the changes need to be smoother, or if you'd like it changes to be more abrupt, or if you want to create the rate at which uh, these values change, then of course uh, SNH LFO is your friend, because it does allow a very deep control over the randomness it creates. For most purposes, however, noise is perfectly enough, and this is what we will be using to replace not only dice, but also the other two random devices whose randomness isn't really quite random. So let's take noise, and um, what noise does is it generates a very, very fast stream of uh, random values, which we can see on the oscilloscope here. Uh, looks like this. That's pretty much what we need, with one important uh, note here. DICE has the setting here to decide if the values it generates are going to be unipolar or bipolar. Noise is of course bipolar, it generates values between minus one and plus one. If you are using DICE in this mode, in the bipolar mode, then this setup is what you need. However, much of the time, especially if you, if we were using noise to uh, uh, generate uh, random pitches, we would want to have uh, we would want to have unipolar values. So, in order to get that, we need a bipolar to unipolar device that will turn the noise into a stream of unipolar values between zero and one, which is how dice behaves in the unipolar mode as well can drop this. So noise generates a stream of values, they get coerced to be unipolar, and then the last thing we need is a sample and hold to maintain, to keep the value. Dice takes a trigger from somewhere, and sample and hold also takes a trigger from somewhere. When it gets triggered, it will get a new value from the noise device and uh, hold on to it. So if you remember previously we used a modulator out device to uh, modulate 
uh, button, which we are actually using in the role of a light. So now, depending on uh, the value we get, the button will light up or will not light up. Finally, we need something to trigger the sample and hold so we can we can take the transport device so that every time we start the transport there will be a trigger which will light the button here or it will not. And of course uh, what we want is to see a whole pattern and then compare the patterns and see if the patterns uh, repeat or hopefully don't. So let's just let's take this and duplicate it what eight times? Uh, so we will have four of these lights here and another four lights here. We can now see that every modulator is modulating a different light, of course, as it should. Just need some more space here. I'm keeping it zoomed in pretty far so that hopefully the video is uh, clearer and you can see better. But of course the setup is very very simple. So it's pretty similar to what we previously did except instead of uh, one dice device we now have three. Everything else is exactly the same. We can save this project and as before we have to close Bitwig and reopen it because that's how we tested previously. Okay, it's right here. Now as I press play, let's see what pattern we're going to get. Okay, that's a nice easy pattern to recognize. It's a letter L. Closing Bitwig and trying it again. Previously, if you remember, or for those who did not watch, previously when we did just that, every time we started Bitwig, the random devices ended up generating exactly the same patterns. And if you uh, pressed play again, you got a different pattern, but the second pattern was always exactly the same. The same second pattern every time, and the third time, and the fourth time. It always worked the same way. So, just a moment ago we got a letter L kind of pattern, so let's see what we get now. Oh, it is totally different. It's completely different. Our second pattern is uh, obviously very different from the one we previously had. If you like, we can try it once again. But noise, thankfully, does give us true randomness. Yes, different again. And one more. Press play. Okay. Uh, these patterns clearly do not repeat. This is what we can use. This setup. That these three devices uh, replace dice as a source of randomness in a way that does not generate repeating sequences. Okay, so the second device we need to replace is chance. Now chance is similar to dice in a way, but uh, of course it receives a trigger here, but on the output it doesn't it does not send a fraction, a, a number, it sends another trigger, or does not send a trigger, depending on random chance. And uh, we can specify the probability with which it's going to uh, send the trigger, of course, with the probability parameter right here. So how can we how can we replace chance using noise. Indeed, it's going to be very, very similar. I will keep, oops, I will keep one set of this, of these devices here, and uh, remove all the others. Now, there is one little thing we need to do. Uh, we will end up receiving a number here just like before. And now we need to see if the number is within the probability that we want to set or if it exceeds that probability. 
So let's uh, take less than from logic and let's take value from level section and the value will be our probability. What's going to happen is that every time we get a trigger and for now we can just replace this trigger with uh, with a manual trigger. If I set the probability knob to about 50%, when I click the trigger, sometimes the light will light up, other times it will not, with a probability of 50%. If I set it to 100%, every click will cause the light to keep shining. And if I set the probability to zero, the light will be permanently off no matter how many times I trigger uh, the sample and hold device. But what we need to see, of course, is whether this setup here is producing a random value or if it's uh, doing something else. So let's uh, do as before. We're going to keep the transport here and the probability. We can have the same probability for, for all our little lights. Um, so let's start duplicating. And we can take this whole thing. Okay. And just... So we can have some more clarity on screen because it start, starts to become a little dense. Now we have duplicated this to have eight identical sequences of devices and they will be producing values. Now again I need to save this project. Let's save it as uh, chance replacement or fix. I'm going to close Bitwig 5, reopen Bitwig 5. Reopen the project. And when I press, uh, when I start the transport, we'll see a pattern here. And hopefully every time we do this, the pattern will be different. Nothing interesting. Oh, because the probability. I left the probability at zero. I'm so sorry. Uh, that's totally my fault. Let's save it. Close it. Reopen it. Too soon? Did I try this too soon? Probably. I probably did. Yeah. Uh, apologies for that. The probability was at zero, so of course we were not seeing... Uh, any lights at all. The point is we have to restart Bitwig because otherwise uh... Right They are all lit up now, but we we don't care because we haven't sent any trigger to these lights yet Which we are going to do right now And this is the pattern we get. Does it look like anything? Maybe like a letter G or number six? That kind of pattern. Closing Bitwig and reopening Bitwig. Mm -hmm. And let's start transport. Clearly a very different pattern than before. And again, to those who did not see the previous video, when we did that with the dice and chance and probabilities devices, every time we, re we reopened the same project in a fresh instance of Bitwig, the pattern here would be identical, would be the same. And if we press the stop and start at the transport again, we will get a different pattern, but the second pattern would always, every time, be the same as the second pattern before and the second pattern before it. And the same with the third and fourth and any further patterns. So um, 
This seems to be working. This is uh, our replacement for a chance device. Instead of using chance, we have uh, we need to have these. As many as five devices, unfortunately, which does uh, clutter the patches somewhat and uh, put a little more strain on the CPU as Bitwig needs to keep track of all these devices at all times, but at least this way we are getting true randomness. And for the final fix, uh, I'm not going to build it from scratch, I'm just going to open the project I uh, prepared previously, because with probabilities it's just a tiny bit uh, more complicated, right? Because probabilities is like a chance device, but uh, in sequence. If the probabilities have eight steps, like in our examples previously, then it's like eight chance devices firing the triggers, or not firing the triggers, in sequence. So, to replace probabilities, we need to do just a little bit more. Now, this everything that you see here on the right, that's just really bookkeeping and scaffolding and, and it's not really part of the solution. We are sending triggers to the latch, the latch uh, stays triggered and uh, sends that to the modulator, the modulator lights up the light if a trigger was received. And there's a reset button to reset the lights and uh, we also have this little uh, bunch of devices here which should disable triggers after the first bar. After the first phase runs through, we disable, we, we simply sever the connection between the triggers coming out of here and the latch devices so that we can observe the pattern that was created when the first bar ran, when the first, when the phase ran its course only once. Otherwise these lights would keep lighting up and all of them would be lit up and we wouldn't actually be able to discern a specific pattern. Now, what are these devices? These you recognize. We have noise and bipolar to unipolar, then we have sample and hold, uh, and we have less than, which we use to control probability. Now, the main player here is this steps device. It looks kind of the same, uh, it, it's hard to tell the difference by just looking perhaps, but this is no longer the probabilities device, this is uh, in uh, Bitwig 5.0, the steps device, but the, the same device of course was also available in previous versions of Bitwig. Here it's just uh, a little more advanced with this additional screen which makes it easier to edit the values. So again I've tried to set them at about 50% as much as possible, but the exact probability doesn't really matter that much. So what happens is this device will run just like probabilities device would run and uh, because this device has eight steps we need to test it eight times. We need to test each of these eight values whether they generated the trigger or not. Well, in order to do that, we need another stepped device. Here, this is just uh, just a gates device. You may not see it very well, but it's important. Oh yeah, it's important that this device is in trigger mode, not as a gate. It could be pulse, I suppose, but definitely not gate. In the gate mode, this whole device would generate just one trigger at the beginning and we wanted to generate as many triggers as there are steps. So these devices need to be synchronized, they have to run from the same phase, uh, they need to have the same number of steps of course, so every time this device moves to the next step, this device also, the gates device, also moves to the next step and triggers the sample and hold, uh, thereby we test the probability. And we simply set the probability here, just like we would uh, by using uh, the old probabilities device. That would work in exactly the same way. So that's how it works. I'm going to save it. And there's the reset button, as always, 
The reason this light here lights up is because we are on the first step and the first step is uh, active and uh, sometimes the probability here is triggered. The trigger is triggered, I'm sorry, at the probability of 50%. When that happens, the light lights up, which is why I needed the trigger. Sometimes I, we may open this project in Bitwig and uh, nothing will be lit up here because 50% probability. Sometimes it happens, other times it doesn't. So, um, yeah, I'm going to now open it freshly in Bitwig. And soon enough, we'll see what happens. First, I need to reset. And I will now start the transport. And we need to wait for one bar for the lights to light up. You may remember that before, with the same test, we were getting a kind of a, a plus sign here, like a unfinished cross, incomplete cross. Uh, this time we are getting this, like a little, what is it, like a little number four or a little chair. Okay. Uh, let's close Bitwig, open the same project again, and see if we get the same pattern. But this time, hopefully, we should be seeing a different pattern. Reset again and press play. Wait a little bit. Yeah, now the pattern is completely different. We can try it again. Set and start transport again and now again the pattern is different this then gives us true randomness as much as possible uh, I did uh, decide at some point when I noticed this uh, when I discovered how the other random devices behave the chance the dice and the gate and the probabilities um, I did actually redo all my generative patches to use these uh, more complicated uh, sets of devices, but uh, I thought it was worth it because um, now those uh, generative sequences, I think, are truly generative and unique, and they don't uh, actually repeat. So just to just to recap, I hope I can do it. These are the solutions. You can take a screenshot of that if you like, or if you like, I can provide you with these patches. Just uh, uh, say so in the comments, uh, and I can upload them somewhere where you would be able to get them from. This is what you need to replace the dice device. This is what you need to replace chance, and this is what you need to replace probabilities. Now, what you cannot see very well in the picture is that the green stepped device here is uh, steps and a yellow step device here is gates. They need to come from the same phase and uh, that's about it. So I hope this was useful. I'd be interested in any comments you have regarding this. And like I said, uh, I reported this to Bitweek and their reply was that indeed that is how the grid behaves and, and that they put it on their to-do list. So hopefully Hopefully we will see a fix for uh, those non-random random devices in the future. For now, we can use these uh, replacements as workarounds. Thank you very much for staying with me to the end. And uh, till the next time. Bye bye.